Where have the bugs gone, mate? Where, where are the bugs? So sprays are pretty controversial. You might have seen recently articles about glyphosate's risk to health or the effects of pesticides on bees. They're generally blamed for the decline in insects that we've had in Britain. So what's it all about? A lot of people unhelpfully use the word pesticide as a catch-all for spray, when in fact there are many different types. For example, the guy who wrote this book wrote, I brought the latest thistle pesticide from the agricultural merchants and spent every night for a week zapping every thistle and nettle on the farm. Now, the uninitiated might read that, and think, pesticides on thistles, you crazy man! But that's not what he means. He means a thistle herbicide. We're not going to use the word pesticide because people, not unreasonably, assume that it means insecticide. So there are three main types of spray that people use in Britain, and a fun extra fourth type that I'm adding in to make sure no one says that I've missed anything. The types of spray are as follows. You have fungicides, which are used to combat fungal diseases in crops like wheat rust. Herbicides, which are used to kill plants. These can be very selective and just target certain weeds and leave grass alone or be indiscriminate, like glyphosate. Insecticides, which kill bugs and often get a bad press. And lastly, fertilizers, which can come in liquid form and be applied with a sprayer. You can spray microorganisms onto a soil to improve its condition or even just apply stuff like diluted molasses to increase biological activity and encourage stuff along the top to rot. So not every use of a spray you see within a field will even involve chemicals at all. Of the chemical sprays, in my experience, insecticides are the least commonly used and the arguments made against them are often quite circular. So firstly, we have the idea that farmers have killed all the bugs because they use too much insecticide. You see this a lot, but it is quite circular because if we had killed all of the bugs, we wouldn't still be wasting time and money on insecticides. But even more circular is the statement that farmers have killed all the bugs, which is bad because we need the bugs for pollination. Do you really think we shoot ourselves in the foot like that? I've worked in agriculture for many years over several different farms and the only application of insecticide I've seen in a field was on rapeseed, which is used to produce margarine and stuff like that. Rapeseed crops are particularly vulnerable to the cabbage stem flea beetle, which attacks young plants in its larval stage and will completely destroy a crop. Recently they banned a seed dressing, which is a coating you put on seeds before you sow them. It combats that beetle specifically, meaning now people have to use more general insecticides to combat this beetle. But crucially, using insecticides in this way isn't ideal. A general insecticide will kill all of the friendly beetles that eat slug eggs, which means if you use them the following year, you have a slug infestation instead. It just causes other problems. But because insecticides are not ideal, they don't get used if we can avoid it. While I've been alive, this farm has grown wheat, barley, maize and turnips very intensively, but we've never used insecticide in a field. They cost money, cause other problems, but more simply, it's just not needed a lot of the time. We have used this though, which is a type of insecticide, an ectoparasiticide, that you apply to the backs of cattle with a squirty gun and it protects them from flies that otherwise bother them and can cause nasty eye infections that can lead to blindness. Insecticides are more commonly used in wheat sheds immediately before harvest to stave off any threat of infestation. A fine, even coat will protect from grain mites, which bore little holes in the grains and eat the flour inside. This is quite a contained use, limited to sheds, and I've never heard anybody moan about it. Fungicides are very commonly used on crops but are nothing to worry about if you're not a fungus. Crops have tracks in them called tram lines to allow farmers to spray them without damaging the plants. Generally if you see somebody spraying an established crop of wheat say it will be a fungicide. Selective herbicides are more commonly applied manually with one of these a knapsack sprayer. You'd use this to tackle patches of nettles, thistles or docks in a pasture but some weeds you still have to pick by hand. Ragwort is poisonous, but will only be eaten by grazing animals if it's wilted. So if you spray it off, it becomes edible and therefore a threat to livestock. Today, indiscriminate herbicides are quite common because they have massive advantages. This chemical is called glyphosate or commercially Roundup or Rodeo. This is one of our fields, the imaginatively named 21 acre, which last year was grass and we wanted to put it onto wheat. To do that, we first had to get rid of the grass, which can be done in two ways. The first way is the organic method. You plough the field which puts the grass underground. This is a very heavy job, so it uses big tractors and works them hard. It burns lots of fuel, lots of carbon emissions, not ideal. And as the roots of the grass are still alive, some of it will come through again, which means you'd likely have to work the ground a second or even third time with some lighter equipment to kill off some volunteers, which are any unwanted plants that grow on cultivated ground. But alternatively, you can spray the grass. This can be done with a much smaller tractor with the engine almost idling. Sprayers cover a much greater area than ploughs, more land covered faster by a smaller machine working less hard and burning less fuel. So you're using sprays but it's saving time and crucially fossil fuel emissions. The idea that organic is better for the environment is deeply unhelpful and something we would do well to move past. Glyphosate is very controversial, though if I'm honest a lot of the opposition is quite wishy-washy and seems to derive from an idea that it seems like it should be bad. There is a recurring claim that it causes cancer which was amplified by the International Agency for Research on Cancer's 
conclusion that it's probably carcinogenic. But this conclusion was not confirmed by an EU assessment or by an evaluation by the UN and World Health Organization, all of which used additional evidence. As with all things, it's very easy to find a single study that suggests the possibility of something bad and start shouting about it but peer-reviewed meta-analyses tend to say that glyphosate is fine. The EU wrote an 11,000 page report on it and they proposed that glyphosate does not need a classification with respect to germ cell mutagenicity with regard to carcinogenicity as toxic for reproduction for specific organ toxicity but it does need one for causes serious eye damage. So basically, if you listen to the experts, you don't want to get it in your eyes, but otherwise it's fine. Glyphosate really is incredible stuff. It gets eaten by microorganisms after application, so it doesn't even stay in the soil. So if we return to the field we sprayed, you can see that the grass isn't looking too sprightly as expected, but it's actually teeming with life. Look at all these birds feeding from bugs here. I couldn't do justice to the sheer number of birds as the camera only points in one direction, but there were dozens. There was also a wasp's nest in the field, which was looking almost too healthy. The footage here sucks, but I wasn't about to get out of the cab. When introducing the Second World War, herbicides replaced lots of inefficient practices. Do you have much trouble with uh, thistles and...? Well, of course, we used to do. My father always used to spud the thistles. There was a terrific amount of thistles here when he bought the farm, and they were always spudded. That's a blade on the end of a shaft just one at a time. But then, then of course, towards the end of the war, uh, sprays came out, and what we'd been trying to do for 30 years, one hour spraying, kill the lot and the roots and finished them. And that was it. They gradually begin to come back, but thistles are no problem like they used to be. I played that whole clip because it illustrates a very important point, which is that sprays save labour. They're quicker and easier than spudding, so farmers seized upon them quickly. Fungicides also became widespread quickly. This film from 1946 promoting the idea that farming is a respectable profession explains the importance of sprays. In another class we were told how plants can get attacked by all sorts of different diseases and pests. And then to follow this up, we learned how to spray fruit trees to protect them from these attacks. There are all sorts of ways in which fruit crops can get spoiled and the trees had to be sprayed three or four times a year. Now, I don't know much about apples, but I met an apple farmer recently who told me that organic apples use the most sprays. Make of that what you will. The story for insecticides is different, however. Before the war, farmers had spent no money and no time trying to control insect pests, so then when products like DDT became available, farmers were hesitant to spend money where they hadn't needed to before. This article says that the uptake of pesticides in Britain is much slower than is often claimed. The uptake of chemical insecticides during the 1940s and 1950s was slower in many agricultural sectors than accounts have often suggested, and slower than the uptake of other agrochemicals such as herbicides. In essence, application of insecticide was patchy before 1965. Insecticide use was more common by the 1970s, but a lot of that use was to control aphids, which spread fungal disease. So as fungicides have improved, that use of insecticide has become obsolete. The other thing to bear in mind is how small the amount of chemical actually used is. Very selective weed killers have appeared on the market, which uh, some people agree with, some don't. And I know there is the Friends of the Earth and those sort of people are saying that farmers use it too much. But in my opinion, the ground isn't saturated with any poisons at present and doesn't look like being for many years to come because the amount that's actually used of the weed killer is very, very small indeed because you see, you see you have to have so much water to get a good cover. It looks a lot, but in, ter in chemical terms, it is not a lot. This is absolutely true. Whatever farmers are spraying, almost all of it will be water. So for one load of that quite heavy dose of glyphosate needed to kill off all that grass, our sprayer takes 16 litres of neat chemical. So the whole sprayer only has this amount of chemical inside it. The rest is water. But I read the label, always read the label, and a lot of What's in this tub isn't actually neat chemical either. The drum as we buy it is only 35.3% glyphosate, which means that the amount of chemical put in our sprayer is actually only this much for the whole thing. It's diluted and very thinly spread. And you need qualifications to apply sprayers. It's not a job that anybody can do, so you can be sure that the maths is being done correctly. Most modern sprayers use satellite navigation to ensure accuracy. We have quite a primitive version, this dome, which has flashing lights in the cab to tell you to move left or right. Most modern tractors have auto steer. You even get smart sprayers that will turn nozzles on and off automatically depending on whether or not that particular patch of the field needs spraying. 
precision farming is an impressive thing. I think that because a lot of people don't understand patterns of spray application in British farming, the role of pesticides in reducing our insect population is greatly overstated. The decline of insects on our farm isn't because of insecticides, because we haven't used any, it's got to be something else. Personally, I think it's probably something to do with the fact that warmer winters don't have the cold snaps that are needed to set off genetic triggers in the insect's life cycles. But I am sure we will return to all of this. I just needed to cover sprays so you knew what glyphosate was, because one of the next videos is going to build upon the benefits of it. And it will be magnificent, so stick around.